able to contain the unlimited within the limited. And because his qualities are unlimited, and we are limited, it became mysterious. We cannot understand everything about God using our mind only. We need side by side with our mind to have faith. But faith does not ignore or cancel our mind. It satisfies our mind first and then goes behind our mind or goes beyond, above our limitations to help us to accept what is mysterious, what is unlimited, what is invisible. Because of that, our Lord Jesus Christ today, if you notice in the Gospel of today, he said, believe to have eternal life. Believe means have faith. To have eternal life. Thomas, you believed because you, you have seen. I am blessing those who will believe without seeing. What does he mean? I am blessing those who will use their faith to accept my unlimited or mysterious qualities. I remember one time we have a famous saint called Saint Augustine. And Saint Augustine in his early age, like in his early 20s, was studying philosophy. And he was like a great philosopher, but still, he's a great philosopher. In his early 20s, he couldn't accept the qualities of God because he wanted to contain God into his mind. If I could not see, same like St. Thomas, if I could not see, I will not believe. If I could not comprehend everything about God, all his qualities, I cannot accept it. I need to see, I need to touch. I need to comprehend. And one day, because he was a very good-hearted man, God sent him somebody, somebody, on the side of the ocean, and this somebody digged a hole, small hole, and they used a small container to take water from the ocean to the hole. Saint Augustine was passing by this man and he watched him. And he was doing that for many hours, many, many hours. So Saint Augustine went to him and asked him, you're very tired and exhausted. What are you doing? And the man answered, I am working to transfer the water of the ocean inside the hole. Of course, Saint Augustine laughed at him and said, where is your mind? Do you have any kind of intelligence? How can you take this huge amount of water inside the hole? So the man told Augustine, speak to yourself. If God is even greater than the ocean, how you are exhausting yourself trying to contain God inside your brain. God is unlimited, is beyond. Yes, we need our brain, our mind, to understand a lot of stuff about God, but we cannot tell God if we could not contain all your qualities inside our mind, we wouldn't believe in you or accept you. <coughs> في حد بيلعب في ورق كده يعني مين بيلعب في ورق كده؟ So in our relationship with God, yes, we satisfy our mind because I understand especially the new generation you study a lot in your schools about the evolution and everything, fine. And you love to use your mind, excellent. Use your mind, but what I am asking you to know, two things. In relationships, you can understand or try to submit the material or the materialistic stuff to your mind. But in relationship, in relationship, give you a very simple example. 
in the relationship between people. If you would like to submit me in my relationship with you to your mind, your comprehension, and your touch, and your see only to believe in me, to trust me, that will be insane. Very simple example. If a father invited his young son to have lunch outside, a uh, son like 12, 15 years old, invited him to have lunch outside. And before leaving the home, the son asked his father, show me your money. Father said, I have the money in my pocket. I don't believe, I need to see. If you wouldn't show me your money, I could not leave the house. Who can guarantee for me a meal if I could not see the money? How about that? How do you see that? The father may reply and say, son, I am your father. And I take care of you even before you see me. Even before you understand that I am your father. Since you were like one month, two months, all over, throughout <coughs> your lifetime, I am taking care of you. And now you are doubting? No, dad, I am not doubting. Just I love using my mind. I want to see. I want to see the money to make sure that outside I will have a meal. Where is your trust? Do you think that it, it can work like that? That every single time the dad invites his son, even he might show him the money one time. But again, next time, it's a rule. If you want to take me out, show me the money. In the relationship, it doesn't work like that. Because if you have a relationship with a father, in addition to that you are touching his care in every moment of your life, and that is, should be enough proof for you that he is a good father and he is taking care of you, in addition to that, also what is more important even is that you trust in him and the trust in the faith. If you don't have trust in God, how can you be a son and him to be a father? This is in our Christianity, we believe that God is our father. And we are dealing with him, not out of doubt, same like Thomas did today, but out of trust. Especially, I myself, I believe that every single one of us has like a wonderful experience with God and how God is taking care of his life. Huge experience, a history, very rich history, I believe so. And if you are, if you would like to have some time, and just count it. See how God is always taking care of your life, and you are his son. So God is expecting us to believe in him, to trust in him, not to doubt him, not to investigate everything, not because he does not respect our mentality. This is not the point. I hope you understand me, new generations. I hope you understand me here. God is not ignoring our intelligence, but he is telling us, first of all, my limitations are beyond your intelligence. If you're gonna investigate me using your intelligence only like St. Thomas, you are going nowhere because you cannot seem like the man was trying to put the ocean in the hole. Okay, and number two, in relationships, we should not investigate everything because we should build trust and the trust is faith, right? I am confirming, God does not <coughs> cancel or ignore our intelligence or our mind. He respected because he created us and designed us to have a mind, to have intelligence, to co-work with him in everything. He respected that, respected that, and he loves that. But my point is our intelligence 
is not always enough in our relationship with God. We, know we need to go behind or beyond, above more than our intelligence through having a faith, same like our Lord advised Thomas and the disciples today, believe in me, have faith in me. Thomas, because you have seen, you believe, I am blessing those who will believe, trust in me, even if they wouldn't investigate me every single moment. But our brain is awesome. This is a point I would like to confirm for the new generations especially. Our brain is awesome. Our, our, <laughs> our intelligence is awesome. We need it and we have to use it. But my point is, it is not enough. We need faith to complete it. Simple example. I, maybe I mentioned it before, but I would like to mention it again today. If you are traveling from here to Europe, from Colorado to England, it's very nice to have a road trip to enjoy nature, right? And investigate and see and have, enjoy the scenes. But you can use your car to have a road trip from here, Denver, till you hit the east coast, till you reach the water of the ocean. And at the, when your car became in touch with the water of the ocean, it becomes useless. You cannot drive your car through the ocean. Otherwise, otherwise, huh? <laughs> otherwise, you will, huh? you will drown, you will sink, you will die, you will die, or you are taking yourself nowhere. You wouldn't reach your goal. But here you used your car for like a wonderful, enjoyable trip. Your intelligence is very important. You can use it. You can think, awesome, but to a limit. And after this limit, to reach your goal, you need either a boat or a flight, right? You need something different to take you above the water to reach your goal. And this is the faith. So intelligence and faith does not, do not contradict each other. They complete each other. I hope that is understandable. So our faith <coughs> helps us to go beyond our limitations to be in fellowship with God who is unlimited. Because of that, if somebody insisted, God, I will accept from you, I will accept from you the part I can see or comprehend only you are not reaching your goal. You cannot be in full fellowship with God. You would like to submit God and his qualities to your limitations. Is he the God or you the God? Because if you'd like to submit him for you to dominate, to understand everything about him, is he the God or you the God? Because of that, our relationship with God is built on trust, on faith, on believing in him and in his qualities. However, listen carefully to me. However, if we cannot contain all his qualities within our limitations, yet we can be in touch with his mysterious qualities. See in the epistle to Romans, chapter 1, starting from, from verse 20, 20. What St. Paul is saying, say, for since the creation, since the creation, since the universe became in existence, since the creation, the invisible attributes of God, his, his eternal power and his godhood are clearly seen. So you can look around, and I always, when I speak, <coughs> with somebody who believes in revolution only, I ask him about three, thi three things. Yes, 
you know, we, we are not against evolution, by the way. We accept uh, many parts of it. But I just always ask three questions. If you believe in evolution, answer me. What is the, the origin of everything? The origin of the existence? Who is behind the design? And who is sustaining the design? يلا أنا كمان عايز أكلم الكبار عشان الحاجات دي مهمة وإحنا بنتكلم مع أولادنا معايا وإحنا بنتكلم أولادنا بنشرح لهم أو بيسألونا بتأمنوا بربنا إزاي والحياة دي مشيت إزاي وبيدرسونا في المدرسة أنها تعملت بالطريقة الفلانية كويس We accept a lot of uh, many parts of evolution but we need to understand is evolution by itself is the only explanation of the existence? Is there a creator? Answer me where everything came from. What is the origin? When you ask somebody a question that, like that, what, what kind of answer will give you? The evolutionist. The Big Bang? The Big Bang, right? What is the Big Bang? The Big Bang is two things, a mass and expulsion. So it's a mass and a force. Where did the mass came from and where is the, the origin of the force? Again, we still didn't answer the question, what is the origin of everything? Correct? But when we believe in God, we believe that God is the source, the origin. So here we have an answer. Who designed? The universe came through out uh, many, many, many tons, billions of years through accident at the natural selection. We accept the natural selection, by the way, because it's like the natural law. Nothing wrong with that. But to replace the intelligent design of the universe with a chance for accident, that is stupid. I'm saying. Why? According to St. David in his psalm, he said, the fool, the fool said in his heart that there is no God. Why? Because he's fool, he's blind. He cannot see around. When you go and study just one single cell of the human being, how can you create that by chance? What is the chance? What kind of intelligence a chance has? <coughs> it's even more convenient and more making sense and more wise and more intelligent to understand that behind the intelligent design, a designer. Right? Or wrong? If it is wrong, say me, I will not wrong, you are the stupid one. <laughs> you can say that, no problem. If you are walking on, the, on sand, on the, the ocean side, and you found, what is the, the latest version of iPhone now? It's 5 or 5? What's called? 5A. Five. That's five. Okay, if you are walking on the sand, on the ocean side, and all of a sudden you find a five iPhone in front of you, charged, working, ringing, f filled with applications, like top notch one, would you say that the piece of sand decided to come together in a party? And they designed, the, they designed the iPhone and they came with this uh, equipment or apparatus working and charged and, uh, and <laughs> filled those applications and connected to a network and everything. Would you think like that? Huh? Say yes or no? no? Would you think like that? No. Why you are laughing? Because it's a stupid. It's a fool. It's a foolish. Right? To think like that. 
right away, your mind will go to Steve Jobs and his team and say, those people are amazing people. They are the designers. Correct? Correct? Right? So listen. Listen, guys. If you're going to take the five iPhone and compare it to just one, one of your hair, this hair, which I can cut one now for you. <laughs> this hair, just one of those, which you threw in the trash. And compare the system here and here, the structure here and here, the function here and here. This is life, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is dead. This is iron, this is something living, growing, working. The structure inside, each single cell, the tissue, just one single hair is, is incomparable to the most advanced equipment any intelligent human being created. How would come we say that the whole universe was created by a dumb chance? How can we accept that? Tell me. So the point is when Thomas came and said to the Lord, Unless I see, I wouldn't believe. Meaning, God, you, for me, you are something very limited. Same like something very, very simple. I, if you are not that limited, I cannot accept you. But God is not like that. If God is the creator of this amazing universe, which we, do, we didn't know, we don't know, like, one over billion of the limits of even the materialistic universe. We need to know that. And God as a creator, the intelligent designer behind it is greater than that. How can we contain the mysterious and limited God within our limits? <coughs> Same like Thomas was asking God today, I would like you to be limited and I wanted to investigate you I don't trust, I need to touch and see to accept. What is your faith? Faith is a power. It takes us beyond our limitations to be in fellowship with God, to enjoy his mysteries and his blessings. Because of that, if the church today is reading for us the gospel about the story of St. Thomas, the church is telling us if you'd like to enjoy fellowship with God, if you'd like your life to be enriched with the mystery and the blessing of his resurrection, if you'd like his resurrection to take you above the limitation of your humanity and your death to have eternal life, just to have faith in him. Trust in him. Glory be to God now and forever.